Hey everyone, this is Reshma from Edureka and today we'll be learning about Tableau. Thank you all the attendees for joining today's session but before I begin I want to get confirmation from you if you can all hear me properly. Okay, so David is saying yes he can hear me properly, Anisha is saying yes and I've got a few other confirmations from the rest of you also. So we're ready to get started. So what to expect from today's tutorial? First we'll be learning about data visualization. Why do we need data visualization? And why choose Tableau for that? Then we'll take a look at what is Tableau and how to install Tableau in our system. We'll take a deeper look at Tableau and understand how to work with it and how to create different visualizations with Tableau. We'll learn about the functions in Tableau and in the end we'll take a look at the success stories of different companies how they have benefited using Tableau. So any doubts on the agenda? Seems quite interesting, doesn't it? Okay, so let us get started then. So let us first understand what is data visualization. Well, data visualization means representing your data in a pictorial form. It may be in the form of a graph or bar diagrams or different kind of charts. And visualization allows us to visual access to huge amounts of data in easily digestible visuals. Because let's say you might have got all the data in Excel sheets. You have got all that with you. You have got the text, you have got the numbers and everything. But if you just view only numbers and text, you might not get a whole picture out of it. So you need to represent in a manner so that you can understand it better. And visualization enables you to have a well-defined overview of your entire data. And the simpler your visualization is, the more insights and inferences you can make from it. So simple representations are the most powerful ones. So that is why we need data visualization to understand our data in a better way. And these can be used for analysis of data to make future predictions. And this is highly used in solving business problems and the tool that we're going to learn today, which is Tableau, this is highly used in BI. So this is data visualization. Now let's take an example. So here we have got the X and Y coordinates of different points, and these represent a line. So the example that is before you, this represents the data points in four quadrants. So you've got the X and Y coordinates. So if you see this data, you'll see that there is not much differences in the numbers. And you might think that when you plot these data points, this might look the same. But now, let us take a look. So when you picturize it, you'll see how different they are from each other. They are not similar at all, even though the numbers look similar. So that is why you need to visualize it to understand it. You will not get the whole picture when you are seeing just numbers. But when you plot it, you can see how different they are. So that is why data visualization is important, and that is why it is highly used because picturizing your data and analyzing will be so much easier when you plot it and you see the behavior of your data and that is how you can make future predictions and that is why data visualization is so popular and people have been using it all around the world so I hope you have understood the importance of data visualization from this example so let us move forward to our next topic and let us see the scope of visual analytics so visual analytics is used widely. It can be used for information analytics, for geospatial analytics, scientific analytics, knowledge discovery, data management and knowledge representation, for presentation, production and dissemination. It's used for cognitive and perceptual science, for interaction, and there are many more usage of it. And why do we use visual analytics? because it helps us to make better decisions because when you can study the behavior of it you can make better analysis of the data and you can take decisions which will be beneficial for your company and you can make future predictions accordingly and plan everything and you can also get a better sense of risk because when you can make future predictions correctly obviously the risk factor will go down and this is very much beneficial for your company and you can also build better customer relationships better key strategic initiative and better financial performance because the risk factor will be low. You can save a lot of money by studying the data, by representing it, and it will give you a brief idea of everything. So this is the entire scope of visual analytics. 
Now let us understand how does data visualization actually works. So the first thing you need to visualize the data is a data set. Now your data set can be in form of text file, it can be any kind of flat file, Excel sheets, you can also connect to any server or any database. So, and not just one, you can integrate and connect different data sets together. And then you analyze that data according to the parameters and then you carry out the visualization of how you want to represent what you have analyzed. This is a brief overview of how data visualization actually works. So there, when in analyzing, you use different formulas, use different algorithms to analyze it, and for visualization, you can choose different charts or maps, graphs, or anything that you want, whichever fits for your data set. And now let us understand why Tableau. If you want to visualize your data, why go for Tableau? Let us understand it by looking at the features of Tableau. So the first feature is that it is very flexible. You can connect it to any kind of data. It consists of an amount of optimized data connectors for databases. You can connect it to an Excel file, you can connect it to a text file, you can connect it to a JSON file or any kind of server. You can connect it to a Tableau server, a Microsoft SQL server, Oracle, Amazon Redshift and many more. And it provides you with a very intuitive platform. Now according to Gartner, Tableau is actually considered the gold standard for intuitive interactive visual analytics and an established enterprise platform and you can represent your data in any way that you want. The visuals that Tableau gives you are very interactive. You can tweak them around, you can play around those graphs and the different charts that you make in Tableau, and you can visualize your data in many ways. And also, it has very quick production time. It takes only a few seconds for Tableau to create the visualization that you want for your data. And that is the reason why Tableau has been among the top charts when it comes to a visual analytics and a presentation tool. And let me tell you that and Tableau has managed to be in the Gartner's Magic Quadrant from years from now and now it is treated as the top interactive tool that is used in BI, standing above ClickView and other tools. And that is why we should all start using Tableau and it is very fun to play around with Tableau, let me tell you, I'll show you that in a while how we can make different analysis of data by representing it visually. So now let us move on to our next topic and let us see in detail what is Tableau. So Tableau is a software company which produces interactive data visualization products focused on business intelligence. And a lot of companies and almost all the big giants are using Tableau for business intelligence and for data analysis purpose. So with Tableau, you can create and distribute interactive and shareable dashboards which depict the trends, variations, and density of data in forms of graphs and charts. And this software also enables you data blending, real-time collapse, which is what makes Tableau stand out from all its competitors and it is very unique. You can use it for business purpose, for academic purpose, or for any purpose, whichever you want to. It will help you to do all the visual analytics that you want. And with Tableau, you don't have to spend much time. Tableau will do all the work for you, so you don't have to wrangle around the data that much. You don't have to scratch your head trying to figure out how you should represent your data. Tableau has got lots of options available. You can choose how you want to depict it, and it will do the rest for you. So this is why Tableau is popular, and this is what Tableau enables you to do. So now let us understand more about Tableau by looking at the architecture of Tableau. So in the left hand side you can see the data sources that you can connect Tableau to. And to connect with Tableau it uses data connectors. And Tableau consists of an amount of optimized data connectors for databases. There are also common ODBC connectors designed for any systems without a native connector. And it offers two modes in support of interacting with data. First, you can have a live connection or in-memory connection. And clients can switch among a live and an in-memory connection, whatever they desire. So this is the analyzing part. So what happens in a live connection is that the data connectors of Tableau control your available data infrastructure by transferring dynamic SQL or MDX statements straight into the source database, except importing every data. If you have provided in a quick and analytics optimized database, such as Vertica, 
then you can get the advantages of that investing by connecting live onto your data. And this leaves the detailed data in the source system and sends the aggregate outcomes of query to the Tableau. And in addition, this means that Tableau can effectively utilize unlimited amounts of data. Well, in fact, Tableau is the front-end analytics client to several of the large databases in the world. And it has optimized every connector to receive the advantage of unique characteristics of every data source. And this is the visualization that you can produce using Tableau. You can make a workbook for Tableau readers. You can also make static readers. Now, you cannot work more in the static readers. This will just represent the visualization that you produce. And you can also produce visualizations for web and mobile users by using Tableau Server. Now, let me tell you how you can use in-memory connection. So, in-memory connection is a very fast data engine to optimize your analytics. You can connect your data and after that with one click you can extract your data to get in memory in Tableau. And Tableau's data engine fully consumes your entire system to attain fast queries, answers on millions of rows of data on commodity hardware. And since the data engine can use disk storage as well and as well as RAM and cache memory. Let me tell you that it is not confined with the quantity of memory on a system. And it is not essential that an entire data set can be loaded into memory to attain its performance objectives. So what happens when a user opens a view in a client device? So when a user opens a view, the user begins a session on the Tableau server, and then the application server thread begins and then verifies the permissions. There are security protocols defined for a particular user, and then the user can have an access to the view created by Tableau. And this is how the Tableau architecture works in order to connect to your data source, in order to analyze it, and finally providing you with a visual data or graph or any kind of visualization that you chose to view. So any questions on Tableau architecture? So no questions. So let us move on and let me tell you how to install Tableau. Now installing Tableau is very easy. You can go to the Tableau website and download the exe file. Just run that file, click on install. It takes minutes to install Tableau or sometimes it can also get installed in a few seconds. After you have installed Tableau Desktop, the latest version of Tableau Desktop is 10.2, so you can install that. And after installing, it will ask you to register to activate your version. So you'll get a license key, you can purchase the license key, and if you are a student and you want it for academic purpose, you can get it for free for a year. So you just have to go through the registration process, and there you have Tableau ready to use. Now let us go ahead and understand Tableau a little bit more. Now let us understand how to connect to different data sources in Tableau. So when you open Tableau, the first thing you'll see is the connect option. Now you can connect to any files. These are the sources that I told you about. You can connect it to Excel files, to text files, JSON files, or any kind of server as well. So if you already have a data set in your system, you can just go browse onto the file location and you can open that. So in Tableau, you will have a sample data set, which is the Superstore, and you can rename it if you want to. And when you load that data set, you'll see a preview of all the different fields and attributes of the data set that you have. So you can see that these are the attributes, the order ID, order date, ship date, ship mode, customer name, segment. And this can all be viewed even before you open your worksheet. Now Tableau has also got different data types. These are the data types that we'll deal with. There are Boolean, which contains true or false. There are date values. There are date and timestamp values. The date values just have the date, the month, and the year. And in date and time, there is also the timestamp in this format. This is the hours, minutes, seconds, and AM and PM. You can also represent geographical values. So there are geospatial data. When you have fields like city or state that is related to a geography, Tableau will detect it and it, you can represent it in geographical values. You can create a view with maps, which is very interactive and which is also very popular in Tableau. Tableau also uses whole numbers and decimal numbers and also text and strings. And all these data types are represented by symbols. You can see over here that text and string values are represented by ABC, 
the date values are represented with a calendar icon. The date and time values are represented with a calendar icon but with a clock. The numerical values are represented with a hash symbol. The Boolean values are T type F which is true or false and geographical values are represented with a globe with latitudes and longitudes. And the best part about Tableau is that it auto detects all the data types. You don't have to specify which data type is what, but if you want to, you can do that as well. You can explicitly define if it's a number or a string. You can do that in Tableau. And now let us see the Tableau desktop UI. So when you open your worksheet, this is what it looks like. So you can see there are dimensions and measures. The dimensions are usually the text data. You can see it's ABC, which means it's a text, or it can be a date. The measures are usually numbers. We'll know more about dimensions and measures later on this tutorial. And over here with this toolbar, you can decide how you want to represent your data. You can label your data. You can use tooltips, which will help you to hover over your data and see the details. You can include what details you want to represent by just dragging and dropping the dimensions in detail section. You can play around with colors about how you want to represent your data. And this is the rows and columns section. So you can just drag and drop items over here. And here you can see the pictorial representation of data. And this is called a canvas. And this is your workspace. This is for creating new workbooks or dashboards. We'll explore more about Tableau UI when I show you the demo. So now let us move on and let us understand about dimensions and measures. So a dimension is a field that is an independent variable. And the data types could be, be strings, it could be geographic locations, numbers, date time, anything. And Tableau guesses the data type according to dimension names. So when you specify region, it might take it as a text or it might also take it as a geographic location. You can define that explicitly as well. So now it is representing it as text, but if you want to represent it as a geographic location, you can specify and change the data type of this field or this dimension. And dimensions are actually used for detailing your data. I'll tell you how. But first let me tell you what are measures. And in measures, all the data types are numbers, and these are the inbuilt data types, the latitude and longitude. This can be used for representing geographic locations. But mostly they're all numbers, as you can see over here. And to represent a measure, you always need a dimension. And dimension, like I was telling you, it helps to detail your data. Now, when you see just measures, let's consider sales. So you'll just see a number. The sales is, let's say, 10,000. But that doesn't give you a whole picture of anything. But when you say it like the sales by region or sales by a unique product ID, and this helps you to add detail in your representation of data. That is how you can get a clear picture of your data when you represent it by different dimensions. And this is what is used for analyzing your data. So this is what dimensions and measures are. Now this is the show me data. So this pane over here shows you how you want to represent your data. So there are a number of options available. You can show your data by representing it in a pie chart, by heat maps, by bar diagrams. There are different styles of representing in bar graphs. Or you can also represent it in the geographical map. When you choose a data set, it will automatically highlight the data that you can use to represent it. If you see over here, some are blurred and some are not. So if it is blurred, you can understand that your data set is not compatible to use these kind of line graphs. You can use a bar graph or you can use a pie chart for that, but not line chart, maybe because your data that you're using is not compatible to it. So now let us move on and understand more about these visualizations. So the first ones are graph. You can represent your data in bar graphs or line graphs, and you can also represent both of them together. You can choose to have a horizontal bar graph or a vertical graph that you want. You can play around with colors. If you want to show different sales by different months, let's say, and you want to represent it with line graphs, you can use different colors for different lines for different months. And if you want to see two different fields, if you want to compare two different fields together, you can use a dual axis graph also. So over here, you can see that we have represented 
this profit and the shipping cost together. Now when I visualize it this way, this was the graph for shipping cost and this was the graph for profit. Now when you represent it together, you can see that whenever the shipping cost was increased, the profit also has increased. So this gives you a clear picture, right? And there is a perfect correlation with shipping cost and profit. So this is how you can make analysis of your data and now you can make future predictions. If I increase my shipping cost, I will earn more profit definitely. So that is why visualizations are important and you need to understand also that how you should visualize your data. And the next is the geographical graph. Now if you're viewing the sales by regions, you can see it in a geographical graph like that. You can pinpoint the areas where you're getting the maximum amount of sales and you can also have an area graph with dual axes. Now these are the sales and profit dual axis graph that you can see over here. And there are many more ways of visualizing your data. Let us see some more. Now this is one of the most popular visualizations in Tableau, which is called the heat map. Now colors are very important in heat map. In heat maps, the denser is the color, the more value it represents. You can see the profit if it's red. So if the colors get darker over here, it means that it is a negative aspect. So you can see over here that the tables category, the sales is very bad or the profit is very bad because it has the darkest color of it. And when you see in case of phones, which is the lightest colors, it means the profit and sales are very high in case of phones. The next one is the tree map. In tree maps, you can represent it in rectangular forms. And also you can play around with colors over here. So the darker the green, the more is the profit. And you can see in case of copiers, it is the highest. And in tables, it is not much. And you can separate your data using rectangles when you're using a tree map. Now let us understand which visualization to apply with what kind of data sets. So in the left hand side, this is the visualization that you should choose and this represents the kind of data set that you're using. So let's say that if you're using a data set that contains discontinuous values, you can use a bar graph for that. And for continuous dimensions, you should use a line graph. And if you want to represent two measures together that we just saw and if you want it for comparison, it is preferable that you use a dual axis graph. And if you want to plot measures on geographical map, if you want to see the sales by region or anything or profit by region or if there is a geographical field involved, it is better that you use a geographical graph in that case. And again, if you want to compare data between different regions or compare different two measures according to different regions, then you can use an area graph with dual axes. Or basically, when you have got a field like there is a count and there is a measure or the amount of density, then you can use a tree map for that. Because with tree map, you can represent the quantity as well as the density of particular measure. So you'll get that idea when you are using Tableau for a while, you'll understand which one will be better. You can also hit and try methods and you can analyze it yourself which visualization will be better for your data set. But this is just to give you a brief idea because your data set will definitely contain at least one or two different kinds of data among these. And now let us understand functions in Tableau. Now you can use different functions to join different data sets. If you want to combine columns, you can use joins. And it uses all the SQL joins that you might have studied about. You can use an inner join, a full outer join, left join, right join. And this will combine different columns together. You can also have a union to combine rows. But the constraint or the condition is that the data fields or the attributes should be same when you are combining different rows together. And this is how you can combine different data sources together by either join or union. You can also sort your data accord with the Tableau sort function. Let's say that you want it in an increasing or decreasing order. You want to maybe see that which one has the maximum amount of sales and you want it on the top. So you can use the increasing order for that also. And it has different sorting techniques. You can choose any sort function that you want to represent your data. And set is a type of filter which we can set a condition for displaying values. 
let's say that we just want to display just one kind of value. For example, over here, let's say that if you want to represent discount, which is greater than 10%. So we can use set for that. And this is actually a collection of dimension members. And you can also use Tableau UI for forecasting. So this is used for prediction. When you have a set of different trends going on, you can represent it by a line graph to represent a trend. And you can derive a future prediction or a future line graph according to the graphs that is represented for different years or different months. And you can use the line graph to predict the future as well. And this highly depends on the values of graphs and the different points in graphs that you're using to represent the earlier values. This is highly used in the business intelligence to make predictions for investments or different purposes. And if you want to highlight something, let's say that you want to highlight a particular trend or you want to highlight the ones that has the maximum amount of sales. So this is what you can use it. You can highlight it with a particular color, blur out the other line graphs or blur out the other diagrams or visualizations that you created. So this is one way also how you can visualize your data. You can also design visuals for a particular device. If you want it in your mobile, you can select it, the device type, tablet, or it is a mobile phone. You can do that also because the resolutions of different screens are different and you know that mobile phones are small, the screen is smaller than the computer or the tablet that you're using. So all the visualizations that you created together in the dashboards might not fit into because it might be too small and you won't get a proper visualization. So you can design it and you can tweak the visualizations according to devices as well. So this is how you can make different visualizations in Tableau. And now let us use some of these. So we are going to have a practical demo for Tableau now. And this is what we are going to do. Now we are going to determine what makes a good movie. Now you might have explored IMDb that rates movie most of the people go to IMDb and check the IMDb score if they want to decide which movie to watch. So let us decide that if the IMDb ratings actually determine a good movie or a successful movie. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a data set which contains the IMDb ratings for different movies and we're going to input that data set into our Tableau. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to compare the gross and the IMDb rating. It means that the money that the movie has earned according to the IMDb ratings. The next insight that we'll have is we'll find a correlation between the IMDb score and the movie budget. We're also going to predict the movie success based on actors or is it the genre which makes the movie successful or is it because of a director. And we'll also try to identify or understand if a Facebook campaign affects the movie sales. And we'll create visualizations for all of these insights. And we'll match our predictions with the actual box office numbers. So let me just show you how to do that. So this is the screen that you'll get when you open Tableau 10.2. So the first thing that you need to do is connect to your data. And my data set is an Excel file, so I'm just going to click over here. So you can browse to the file location where your data set is contained. And this is my data set, which is a movie data set that contains all the different movie fields like movie title, IMDb score, and many more. So we'll see this data set now. So click on open. So this is a preview of the data set that we are dealing with today. So you can see it defines that it, whether it's a colored movie or black and white, the director name, num critic, the duration, the Facebook, director Facebook likes, actor Facebook likes, and many more fields. It also contains the budget, the IMDb score. So we're going to make all the insights that I just talked about, and we're going to use this data set and visualize this data set by comparing different fields together. So now you can go to the worksheet. So this is what the worksheet looks like. It has got all the dimensions. These are usually text and there is one geospatial which is country and there are measures. These are the numbers, the gross amount, the face number in poster, the duration, Facebook likes, the budget, 
the aspect ratio, the actor likes. So these are all numbers. So we're going to compare all this one by one and we'll make the insights that we talked about. Okay, so I have a question from Akshay. He's asking that how to decide which is dimension and which is measure. So we just talked about it a while ago. So you can see over here the dimensions are mentioned over here and measures are mentioned over here. And you don't have to worry because Tableau auto detects everything. So when there is a text, when the field contains any kind of text, it is automatically moved on to dimensions. And when it contains numbers, it is automatically moved on to measures. But if sometimes there, you want a number in the dimension as well, so you can specify it like, for example, over here, this is a number over here, the title year. But this is not something that you can operate on. It can be treated as a dimension. If you want to see that for a particular year, which was the most successful movie, so that can be thought of as a dimension because this adds detail to your visualizations. And that's what dimensions are for. So have you got your answer, Akshay? Okay, so he says yes. Great, so we'll move on and we'll create some visualizations of our own. So let us first compare the gross and the budget of a movie. So you just have to drag and drop dimensions and measures over here, how you want to plot your graph or your visualization. So first I'm going to drag the movie title over here and put it to columns because we need this, right? Because we are deciding on what, which movie earned what. So definitely we need a dimension movie title over here. Now we're going to compare budget and gross. So these could be found in measures. So this is the budget. So we'll put it on rows. There it is. And also the gross. So these are the two graphs that you can see over here. Now you can also sort this graph accordingly if you want to see that which one has the highest gross amount. So you can just click this over here if you want it in a descending order or ascending order. Now we want to see the best one at the top or best one at the first. So I'm going to set it in descending order. And when you click this, so this is according to the budget. So you can see the budget has been in ascending order and you can see the gross over here. Now let's say that you don't want to represent the sum value of the budget because there might be some movies that have got an older version and a newer version of the same name. So that will just add up the budget of those two movies with the same movie name. So that's why we're just going to go ahead and the measure as an absolute attribute. And we'll do the same with gross. And there it is. So you can compare. So if you can see over here, this will have multiple, the host. And you might also find other movies like the host. When it says, when you hover over this movie, and you can see that the budget and gross are star marked, it means that they have multiple values. So maybe you don't want to include such movies in your data set. So you can just go ahead and right click and exclude this. Now you can also go ahead and change the color to differentiate between the two bar graphs. So if you want to go change the color, so just click on colors and let us give it the color orange. So this is the budget graph and this is the gross income of the movie. Now if you want to add more detail into it, let's say that you want to also see the IMDb score of all this particular movie. So just go to the measure that contains IMDb score, which is this, and drag it to the detail over here. And you can see when you hover over this one, this will also show you the IMDb score. Now let's represent this bar diagram or our visualization in a better way so that we can compare these two measures together. So let's just say that I want the budget in a line graph. So click over here and select line graph. So this is still not giving us a more clear picture. So let me just represent it in a different way and I'll copy it into a new sheet. So what I'll do over here is I'm going to make a dual axis. So now you can see that you can represent this two in the same X and Y axis because before that, because in sheet one, if you can see that the budget and gross, they have got different ranges. The gross is measured in millions, whereas budget is measured in billions. Well, it's fine when you hover over this, you can see it, you can see the actual budget and the actual gross, but visually it still doesn't give us a clear picture. 
So that's why we're going to make it a dual axis. So let me just go to the gross income over here and represent it as a bar graph. So now you can see this diagram and you can make this following insight that it is not necessary that the movie that has spent the most money or that had the most budget that wasn't a successful movie or that movie doesn't earn that much always. So because if you see this movie over here, Lady Vengeance, the budget was so high, the IMDb score was quite good, but the money they earned or the gross isn't that good. But if you see in case of Avengers, you can see they earned more money than the budget they actually had and the IMDb score is also good. So we can make this following insight that budget doesn't really matter much when it comes to earning gross. IMDb score can matter, so we'll make some more comparisons to understand if IMDb score does matter. So this was one insight that we made. Now let us also check that whether the director and the actors, do they matter? So we'll make another worksheet over here. Okay, so now let us compare the IMDb score and a particular movie. So look, we're going to see that which movie has the most or the highest IMDb score. So for that, I need the Dimension Movie title. I'm going to select Add All Members. And then I'm going to select the IMDb score. So let us sort it in the highest first. So this will show you the IMDb score if you hover over this one. So you can see some of these movies, they have got IMDb score more than 10. Whereas you know that IMDb rates movie from 0 to 10. It is because the measure is mentioned in sum. So we want the absolute measure, so we'll convert it into attribute. And now you can see it has been rated from 0 to 10. Now let us sort it again. So these are the kind of movies that I was talking about. These have got more than one IMDb scores because maybe these are the same name but they were released in different years so let us exclude this kind of data from here just because we don't want to create any confusion okay so there it is so you can see that towering inferno this has the highest IMDb rating with 9.5 and the second one with 9.3 is this Shawshank Redemption which is one of my favorite movies let me tell you it's a really great movie if you haven't watched it it is one classic movie to watch. You should watch it. And now we can also compare the gross income. So I'm going to select gross here as well. And again, I'm going to select attribute and let us represent it in a dual axis. Okay, so when you plot it in a dual axis, you can see the IMDb score plotted and the gross also plotted. So this is the IMDb score over here in pink and in orange you can see the gross income of the movie. Now still it doesn't give you a clear picture because the comparison range for IMDb score starts from 0 to 10 but the attribute gross they have earned in millions so the scale is mismatched. So this is not a very good idea to compare IMDb scores and the gross together. So we'll try to figure out to represent it in a better way. So what we'll do is that we'll remove the gross from over here. So now you can only see the bar graph with the highest IMDb scores like this. So now let's just put the gross income of the movie in detail. So we'll just drag and drop to detail and include this in the tooltip as well. So it is also included in the tooltip. So make it to attribute. So now we have sorted all the movie titles according to their IMDb score. So that with the highest IMDb score, we have got The Shawshank Redemption, which is a really good movie, let me tell you. And you can also see the gross income of that movie here. So if you just go and hover over all the gross income, you can see that IMDb score does matter a little. But if you compare Godfather and Shawshank Redemption, so they don't have much difference in score, but the gross income is quite huge. The difference in gross income is quite huge, you can see that. So let us compare with lesser IMDb score movies. So let us compare this. So even though you can see that the IMDb score is quite less, but the gross income, which is almost 4 million, it is not that much different with the Shawshank Redemption. 
And if you see the movies over here, which is the baby geniuses, it has almost earned the same money as Shawshank Redemption, so even though the IMDb score is quite less. So it means that IMDb score doesn't matter that much or doesn't matter completely when it decides to earning money. So what then decides more? So let us now compare the Facebook likes because when you make a Facebook campaign for a particular movie, maybe it becomes more popular and more people go to watch it. So we'll try to analyze that too. So let us create uh, one more new sheet. So now let us pick movie title in columns because that will be always common since we are trying to find which movie is the best. Or we're comparing the different measures of a particular movie so we always want the dimension movie title in our analysis or in our visualization. So now let us pick the actor one Facebook likes. So actor one is the main protagonist in the movie. So we'll click on this over here and since the ultimate result of making a movie successful is the money it incomes or the total earning of the movie which is specified in gross so we'll also pick that as well and we're going to change it to attribute the same thing I'm gonna do with this one now this is the Facebook like of the particular actor it's not a movie page and we have specified the actor's picture or something it's not that so this is the official Facebook page of a particular actor like Christian Bale, Tom Hanks or the movies that we're talking about here. So now let us just sort this according to a descending order. We'll add some more gross and details. You can add some more parameters over here. Okay so we'll try to make this visualization a little better. Let me just sort this by gross uh, let me sort it in descending order. This is the movie that has earned the most money, which is the Avatar. So this is the Blue Alien movie. I'm very sure that you all have watched it because there were a lot of, there were like huge loads of Facebook and media promotion for this movie. So this was the movie that was created by James Cameron after 25 years of research or something. So it was promoted like that. So that's why maybe a lot of people went to watch this movie and it earned that huge amount of money. So we'll try to make this visualization a little bit better. So let me just represent it in dual axis. So that gives us a better picture. And now we'll change it to a line graph. And for cross, we'll change it to a bar graph. Okay, so the blue line is hidden behind the bar. So what you have to do is just switch the positions. And there it is. Even though you can see that Avatar has the highest income, but the actor on Facebook likes is quite less. And in case of Titanic, the actor Facebook like is quite high. So if you want to find peak points, so which is, this seems as the highest point, which is 40,000. Okay, but if you look at both of these graphs together, you can see there is a correlation between them. Even though Avatar is an exception, maybe because of the director of this movie that people went to watch it. But if you see it over here, the actor Facebook likes also determines the income that the movie has earned. Maybe because people go to watch a movie because of, the, of a particular actor, right? So that's why we can make this insight that an actor's popularity definitely affects the earning of a particular movie. So if you just continue to see this graph, you can see that there is a correlation. Maybe it's not a direct correlation, but an actor Facebook likes or the popularity of an actor definitely does matter. Okay, so now let us represent these comparisons with different colors. So let me now remove this one. We don't need this. So now I have again the bar graph according to the highest gross income of a particular movie. Now what we'll do is let us take into account the cast total Facebook likes. Maybe it's not just for the protagonist because some movies also cast like there are multi-star movies. So we'll just take this and drag and drop onto the colors option. So if the color is dark, you can understand that it has the highest or more Facebook likes of the total cast members. 
so since Avengers, which is also a multi-star movie, you know that there is uh, most of the popular actors are casted in this movie. So that's why it is darker because it has the highest Facebook actor likes. And the same thing we can do it for the director also. So there is one more measure, which is the director Facebook likes. So we'll drag and drop that to the colors as well. And you can see Dark Knight. So yeah, as you know, the Nolan is everyone awaits for a Nolan movie. So that's why the director like is a very much. And you can see the color indicates the director Facebook likes as well. So similarly, if you go and check this, so you can see that there are not much very popular directors. So Nolan is one of the most popular directors. You can see that the color is quite dark over here. And if you see the gross income of the movie, it is also quite high. So you can say that a director Facebook likes or the popularity of a director also determines the gross income because people have heard of the director and they believe on that director that this is going to be a good movie if this person has directed it. So you can make that insight that a director also determines the gross income of a movie. So for Avatar, the director Facebook likes is zero, maybe because James Cameron doesn't have a Facebook page. So you also have to rely on the data set as well. Maybe because if you would have had a Facebook page, you would have got a few likes as well. So there can be exceptions, so you have to consider that also. So these are the insights that you can make. So this is what we did. We compared the gross and the IMDb rating. So we found out that the IMDb rating does not have a direct correlation with the gross income that they earned. And movie budget also has nothing to do regarding the IMDb score. It doesn't mean that if a movie budget is high, it is not necessary that IMDb rating will be high as well. But when you see according to the cast or the popularity of the cast members, you can see that the gross income is quite high, which is also similar when you compare it with the popularity of a director. So that is how you can make insights because, and this was only possible because we created visualizations about this data. Now looking at the numbers doesn't give you that picture. Only because we were able to represent our data in pictorial form or in good visualized form, that's why we're able to make this insights and we matched it according to the box office numbers, which is the gross and the IMDb score, and we have found out these results. So that is how you can use Tableau to make insights, to compare different parameters together, and we were able to do all these calculations and make all of these insights because we had good visualizations which we made it in Tableau. So I hope you have understood how we can make insights and how we can use Tableau for that. And let me tell you that it is not necessary that you always use bar graphs and line graphs to compare like I did. It completely depends upon the data set that you have, the fields that you're dealing with that is in your data set. So any questions? All right, so there are no questions, so we'll move on. And we'll take a look at the success stories of Tableau. So almost every company uses Tableau. It's a business intelligence tool. And all of this company that you can see in front of you in the screen, they all use Tableau, starting from US Air Force to Burger King, Citibank. You can see these are all different companies, but they all use Tableau. Now, these are a few of the comments made by the most influential people from a particular company. You can see Ryan Reiner from Deloitte says that, Tableau is changing the game for us. It's reduced the time that they have to spend on lower value add activities. Similarly, Gerald and Nimzik from One Kings Lane says that it increases our sales, it decreases our cost, there is a direct impact. It just gets you inside faster. And you can read for the other two as well. So there are many success stories. People are absolutely loving Tableau. And once you use it, I hope that you love it too because you can do and you can play around with data in different kind of ways with Tableau. So this is all that we learned in today's tutorial. Now let me just give you a brief summary of what we learned today. So at first we have understood what data visualization is and the importance of data visualization. After that we explored a data visualization tool which is Tableau and we understood the features of Tableau. We understood what is Tableau, how to install Tableau and we understood Tableau in a little more deeper way. You know how to make Tableau connections, you know how to make visualizations with Tableau, 
how to use different Tableau functions. We have also seen the Tableau customers and Tableau success stories. So this is what we learned today. Any questions? I can still answer it before this tutorial ends. All right, so no questions. Thank you for watching this tutorial and thank you all the attendees for joining this session. If you want to ask any questions or if there is any feedback that you want to give it to me, then kindly drop a comment in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time. Till then, happy learning. I hope you enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.